Hello, in this video we will be learning about the weight node in an atom. This node does something very straightforward but important. It pauses your workflow for a certain amount of time or until a certain event happens. Think of it like an automated timeout or a stopwatch you can use in your automation. We will break down exactly what the weight node can do with simple analogies, of course, show how to set it up step by step and run through a basic example. By the end of this video you will know how to make your workflow wait and why you might want to. Let's jump in and add some patience to our NADN workflows. The wait node is like pressing the pause button on your workflow. When the workflow reaches this node, it will stop and wait until a condition is met and then continue where it left off. The conditions can be after a time interval, for example, wait for one hour or five minutes, maybe two days, or until a specific time or date, for example, Wait until December 1st, 2025, 9 a.m. before moving on. Or maybe until a webhook is called. Basically, pause until an external signal comes in. Think of this like I'll pause here until I get the confirmation or some data from the outside. And then the, then the last one is until a form is submitted, which means it can show a form for a user to fill and resume when that's done. In simpler terms, it's like telling your workflow hold on for a bit or wait until I say go. For example, maybe you want to send a follow-up email seven days or someone signs up, a wait note can pause the workflow for seven days before sending that email. Or you might start a process, then wait until an approval comes in, using the webhook or form options before continuing. Without the wait note, workflows would normally just run instantly from start to finish. The wait notes gives you the power of timing and sequencing, which is incredibly useful for reminders, follow-ups, scheduling things at specific times and creating human in-loop approvals. Let's set up a wait note step by step. We will do simple time-based wait index example. First of all, drag a wait note in your workflow at the point where you want to introduce a delay or pause. Typically, you'll, you will have something happening before the wait like an initial trigger or data some data collected then the wait node then what should happen after the wait click on the wait node to configure it you will see options corresponding to the conditions we mentioned set the duration select after interval you will enter how long to wait you typically have two fields wait amount and wait unit for example if you want 10 minutes, set amount is equal to 10, unit is equal to minutes, for one day amount is equal to 1, unit is equal to days, etc. Let's say we put 1 and choose hours, meaning wait 1 hour. The wait node will now be configured to pause for that duration. If you choose a specific time or the specified time, you would use a date time picker to select when to resume. If on webhook call, it would give you a unique web URL that you or an external service can call to resume. For time-based weights, also be mindful of time zones. After the wait node, connect the next node which should execute after the wait is over. For example, if you want to send an email reminder after the wait, you would connect the email node next. It's very important, nothing after the wait node will run until the wait condition is satisfied. So it's literally holding the place. Testing a wait can be tricky because, well, it waits. For a quicker test, you might set a short interval like one minute to see it resume. When you run the workflow, it will hit the wait node and then pass. In N810 execution list, you will see the execution is waiting. After the time passes or event occurs, it will automatically resume and execute the remaining nodes. You might not see it resume in the editor unless you check the execution logs. But trust that after the hour in example is up, it will continue if using the webhook wait, you will trigger that externally to test it. For wait that for wait that's are long, you usually have to have the workflow active. And that typically on an N810 instance that always running, like in an in N810 cloud or a server, so that it can keep track of the waiting. When using wait node, once it pauses, N810 stores the state so it can pick up the later without running constantly. Just something to know. 
Though as a beginner, you might not need to worry beyond simply using it. That's it for the setup. It's one of the simpler nodes to configure since you mostly just tell it how long or what to wait for. Let's do a simple example, sending a follow-up email after a delay. A new user signs up on your site. You might send a welcome email immediately. Then a week later, send a follow-up email and asking how they are doing if they need help. You might start with a webhook or may start with a any then form. Next, you add an email node to send an immediate welcome email using the user's email from the sign up data. Then you add a wait node, configure it to wait after time interval seven days. After the wait, add another email node. This will send a follow up email like Hi, this name, it's been a week since you joined. Hope you're doing well. Do you have any questions, etc.? When a user signs up, the workflow triggers, the form triggers, it sends the welcome email right away. Then it hits the wait node, and that particular workflow execution will pause after pause for seven days. After seven days, NA10 will automatically resume the execution and proceed to send the follow up email. The user gets a second email a week after their sign up, just as planned. You could do shorter ways too, for example, wait one, one hour after any event to do something or wait until a specific time or a day to batch processing something. The wait node basically gives your workflow a sense of timing and pacing, which opens up a, a lot of possibility for automations that are not just instantaneous. And that's the wait node. You have learned how to pause workflows for set times or until specific events happen. This is super handy for scheduling tasks or creating workflows that need a delay or a human check-in. We hope this simple guide helps you feel comfortable using WaitNode in your own projects. If you found this explanation helpful, please like the video and subscribe to our channel for more beginner-friendly NA10 tutorials. I would love to hear your thoughts on how to, you plan to use the WaitNode. Feel free to comment below. Thanks for watching and let's continue our journey to the next node.